Well, good morning, everybody. It's Gary, the Attitude Adjuster, back in front of you again on the 27th of May. I just thought I'd um, say a quick good day to uh, John, um, Farming Life Australia. Please, guys, switch, uh, head on up there and um, have a look at his um, his channel and um, give him some support. Um, subscribe to him, like his stuff, enjoy yourself. Now, about a week ago, I promised John that I would um, do some um, some filming on the drones and stuff like that. Uh, John said he didn't have a lot of money to throw at the subject and stuff like that. One of the big problems with the drones, um, having flown the drone and stuff like that, is that um, I acknowledged up front that you know we wanted something that was a bit more robust. For me, the DJI Phantoms um, provide that, so we only came in on the uh, DJI Phantom 3 um, standard edition, so it wasn't the elaborate Pro Edition or any of those things. And now that's superseded by the fours, and that's the problem, John. You know, the drones that I was looking at to uh, purchase are all around the $3,000 investment, and um, most of the time you probably want two batteries with the with the drone. Um, as that stands just to um, be able to get a lot of the stuff done that you want now flying the drones isn't that hard um, one of the bigger things to consider when you are purchasing the drone and things like that from a real person's point of view not a teak geek, geek um, hotshot drone flyer every single day's point of view um, a lot of the tech reviews aren't much good to guys like us that actually um, the information they're giving you really doesn't help you. It doesn't matter what they tell you uh, about the about the camera side of things, you're still trying to get past just the understanding of the flying and stuff like that. And a three thousand dollar item is a um, is a big problem to two people. Now I bought the um, Phantom three just as I were running them out. Uh, and I tell you what I'm I couldn't be happier with it. You've already seen me land it in the Lantana um, I've never crashed, crashed, as in completely out of control, smashed into stuff and crashed side of things. For me, it's very, very sturdy, right? People all talk about, when you're looking at drones, John, they talk about um, a lot of the times being able to carry them. This guy here, when I chuck him on the seat in the back of the car and I don't strap him in and put the seatbelt on him, I've never had him move on the back seat, you know, on a normal pulsar like that. It's just enough of an incline... It sits rock solid up against the seat and it never goes anywhere. So their argument to say that it's too big, too bulky and those things, the the legs give it a really good um, cushioning and an amount to protect the camera. Where a lot of the smaller drones that they talk about, you'll see the, the camera's very susceptible to damage up in underneath. Um, you know, they talk about this ribbon cable goes to the camera and whatnot. Well, you know, I've had no problems and things like that. But... See, from brand new, I only paid $700 for it. So it wasn't an enormous investment. The trouble is that secondhand, these guys, people are asking around $500 for them. Um, and you've got no idea of how, you know, how much they've been crashed or had, had issues and whatnot. But as the drone is overall, couldn't be happier with it. Simple to fly, well balanced. I've even clipped the occasional tree branch as I was flying through thinking I'd missed that area, thought I was clear and just clipped the branch and she had a bit of a bit of a hissy fit and just kept the throttle flat out and she, you know, just picked herself straight back up to correct a flight and, and was, you know, continued on with flight without any more um, problem than that. So price wise I couldn't recommend that stronger enough for you the difference between these guys from a lay person's point of view like yours and mine is that these guys when you step into the pro version okay and the advanced version of the um, fours now it means that you've got a lot better satellite coverage and that is really really um, a great thing the more satellites you're tracking the more information you got coming into it doesn't make your flying more complicated but it makes its positioning and understanding um, you know, much, much better. Hugely improved from our point of view of not losing the drone. Now, if you're like me, and I think you might be, John, when you get to that stage, um, my flying's in sight. Like even, even you know, at some sort of distance there, 
which is probably you know 300 meters or something like that i can still see the drone all i do john it, this is simple basic flying that is what you need on your tech reviews and that is um turn the drone around watching your watching your camera which will be in your phone because that's how you fly off that's your screen that you use unless you go up to the real um three thousand dollar version with the um its own screen i always just turn the drone around till it's facing me till i can see myself in the shot and i fly it back to myself as long as i look up and i go there's no trees in between us i fly him straight home i don't land the drone i bring the drone in i bring him down to lower them where i will comfortably grab him and then i see simply reach out perfectly reach out grab him from underneath and i hang on to him and then i turn the motors off okay um, I prefer it than putting it down on the ground. You would know from electrical tools and your trade work, the more you suck dirt up into um, electrical motors, we always got flogged by the old man for putting the power tools down on the ground while the motors were still spinning and they're sucking dirt up into it and you hear them grinding away. That's why we have power tools today that we still have after 40, 50 years of um, service. But that's a good point. Now, if you bring it in and you hold it up here, and reach up to it okay when you try to pull it down to the comfortable height to then turn off the motors it tries to go back to the height that it was at if you bring it down lower reach up underneath it safely right and then lift it up and kill your motors it's not trying to go back down okay it just will allow you to do that if you're trying to pull it down from a height it wants to fly up to that height and say well hold on a minute something's gone wrong increase the motors so that's just a little tip for you um, there's no need to be frightened of flying your drone or figuring it out as you go along. Forward is up on this stick here, back is down. That also kills your motor if you bring it back into that locked position. Turn left, so it pivots left, pivots right, okay, and then um, forward away from you, back to you, right, so it'll go right or left. Now look, my old man always taught me a little secret, okay? If you're trying to work out where you're going to with your Refidex, you always turn your Refidex around, so your Refidex is pointing in the direction of north or wherever you're orientated to, and then you can work out whether the job site or where you're trying to go to is to your left or to your right. You get tons of tech guys and reviews trying to tell you, now remember, when you turn the drone around, you're all of your controls are facing the wrong way around and you've got to try and learn how to fly it that way save yourself a heap of time and fly it the correct way john just simply fly it but in front of you so you're correct in your controls okay and then go over the other side if you have to and turn around and face back this way if you're flying back this way um it's much easier to just keep your orientation correct to you um than to do it the, than to try and remember it always the other way around okay so plus also if you fly it just a little bit of input and watch what what's happening you can fly it the other way i fly it visually i don't i don't even remember which way the controls are for those things anymore i just give it a little bit of input and watch if it's going the, to the left when i want it to go to the right okay it's the wrong way around right i just remember that and i fly it to me with the least inputs fly it to me for the corrections that i want to do if you're filming something much better to fly over it going forwards you're sideways or you're turning as you're flying gives you that head spin thing when you're trying to watch the video i prefer to try and steer away from that fancy flying a little bit but all you need to do is go out into an open area and have a play with those things now what you'll find with flying the more you practice like every single thing the better you get at it okay um the thing with the um with the flying is that when you're turning at so you're flying forwards and you're turning you get a lot of yaw and it and it drifts right it continues the momentum that it had so it's very slow to turn so you can turn well in front of these trees and actually clip the last lot of trees on your way out of it because there is so much yaw and drift as you got your turn on okay um that's just practice to realize that a lot of things with flight like riding a motorcycle or riding a bike you learn by practice and you just have them instinctually within you if you try to complicate it by trying to understand it too much 
often you'll have problems okay where you're much better off just flying and learning to fly and realizing if I turn and I'm in where I fly it is right in amongst all of the all of the vegetation so I have to fly dead slow and I have to be very careful about how and where I fly because of that reason um, understanding that that happens makes it much easier to go okay we better be steady here turn around on the spot and then make your flight out don't go fancifully like I did there trying to turn and come out thinking I was already clear of the trees and there's a little bit of drift there and I clip the branches clip the leaves um, you know you break the drone you break the drone it's your problem so don't break the drone it's simple as that um, a lot of the footage that we would shoot um, us uh, doesn't have to be shot at speed it doesn't have to be um, you know really hardcore fast flying although I like that getting right down there you see some of the footage I've shot with the John Deere and everything I was a foot off the off the machine as I was flying through with those things all without destroying the drone drone but it's good fun to start to practice to that level when you get better at it but I fully accept if I screw up I screw up and I damage the drone that's that's my thing but I don't enjoy the footage that's 300 feet in the air um, as much as I enjoy that stuff that's in those areas. That's what I like. But anyway, that's that's my personal um, enjoyment. So that one's the G DJI Phantom 3 Basic, like standard. Um, I couldn't recommend it well enough, but I don't think it's a $500 drone where people are selling them. You know, and that's something that I, you need. I'll tell you now, the thing about drones is they have to be doing what you want them to do. Um, it's no good buying the drone, which we did with this one, and then it sat on the shelf for um, six to eight months. Now, Joel, from playing computer games, and we both play against each other and stuff like that, can outfly me 10 to 1 all the time. But he worries about if he crashes the drone and breaks the drone, we're out $700, okay? But this doesn't earn us any money while it's sitting on the shelf. Now for the Lantana stuff we do, for Lantana Removal Queensland, this stuff here, there's no way of getting that footage. Walking along with a camera on a stick doesn't do it justice when you fly over it and you go, oh my God, look at the size of the area that's um, infected and whatnot. So it's a tool. It's a tool like any other tool. But it's not going to make you any money while it's a business card sitting in your, in your drawer. It needs to be given to somebody and needs to be used. So I started flying it. I love flying. You know, there's, it's a good enough reason to take my drone out and just go and fly, which I'm charging the batteries up for now. Um, but the weather's starting to look a bit rainy. And I, I, I wouldn't fly a drone in rain at all under any circumstances. Okay, on the front there's your camera up and down on the Phantom uh, 3 and the 4. It's just a fixed camera it's just a fixed camera it it goes up and down it doesn't go side to side on the inspires which is a five thousand um, dollar drone you know the camera can move 360 degrees it is you know one day i will have one of them but um i think that pretty much covers it i'd always fly it with the gps mode you can fly attitude um and then you fly the drone every other part of it uh sensors don't work so much i think but anyway I just fly it on that mode. I don't, I'm not. If I've got something working, working properly, and I'm happy with it, um, then that's good enough for me. On the Phantom Fours, they run two aerials and a much better remote. It's a completely different thing. Even though it's exactly the same type of scenario, much better radio. On this one here, that's one thing that I would say is the downside between it. But in you know, 100, 200 meter type stuff. For us, that's as good as we want while we're practicing. So the cheaper in this sort of range, the better, you know. That's what I would recommend to you for ease of flight, well made, uh, very happy. Your smartphone just goes in there and the app runs it and controls it. So that's that particular one. I might break this video off and then I'll show you the, uh, new, um, the new drone. Okay, so I'll tell you its story once we get back. Okay, look. Thank you all for dropping by. Please subscribe to our channel. Please like our videos. Um, please have a comment and um, discuss things. There's a lot more of you guys flying drones. And a lot more of you will have much higher understandings of different parts of this thing um, as you go through. But um, I like the down to the ground, low and uh, enjoying stuff. I don't see 
a lot of the flying it you know um two kilometers away how did the drone disappear how did it go wrong well you know um that's asking for you know things to uh, end up out of control but you know same deal if that's what you're enjoying and you're flying that's that's great but um you know i've seen casey neistat stuff with how many drones he's um broken and put in the drink and you know things like that um but you know i can't afford to to risk my drone too far i'm willing for it to be a casualty of war while it takes pictures and whatnot but i can't afford to throw it away so anyway thank you very much for watching that's our uh, phantom 3 basic um uh drone standard and um we'll move on to the next one g'day everybody i'm gary i'm the attitude adjuster thanks for popping in so um i updated my drone and i bought a unique um typhoon q500 4k camera so that's the um the remote control system much better system and it's starting to rain on us so i might have to put all this away so anyway that's going to be the intro to it but it comes in a beautiful um u-butte aluminium box which is you know the drone is very similar in its um what's the name to the to the phantom but it is um much bigger built now i bought that second hand through gumtree i got it for a very extremely good price nothing like the retail prices on the equipment the drone's never been flown but the guy was having a lot of trouble um, selling it now not because of anything wrong with the drone but he suffered from the same stuff that we suffered with with um, Jolly my boy who's an excellent pilot but even I wasn't prepared to take the drone out and fly it and risk um, damaging it um, I was waiting for Jolly to do the do the honors because I trust he's flying he is a fantastic pilot in video games and stuff like that so I'm just going to put this over here. I'll be right back in front of you. I'll keep talking to you. So anyway, so so that was what we um, ended up with. And um, sorry about that, guys. So basically, I just wanted to put that away. So I bought this one here, the unique Typhoon Q500 4K. Now, in so many ways, there's, um, it was a steal, an absolute steal for the price I bought it for, considering it was absolutely brand new. Now, the big thing with, the, with it was that he actually had bought, <laughs> he bought about eight sets of propellers for this thing. I don't know, I don't know why he intended to crash it so much. Um, I personally wouldn't recommend crashing the drones. <laughs> But, you know, it's obviously not something that we go out of our way to do. But, you know, it came with the remote control for return to home and all sorts of different things. Um, Unique even supply you with a, um, with a program, a simulator program. Um, I haven't even played with that yet. It's still sitting on my computer desk in my office. But, you know, considering um, what I paid for it, and it's in, in you know, its original case never been flown um hasn't even hasn't even been properly unpacked it came with four batteries okay um a lot of accessories four batteries you know eight sets of um you know it's even like a luggage case with the rollers underneath it the rollers under the suitcase and the pull-up handle to pull it along in the airport and stuff like that sort of thing so when i saw all the things that that unique had put into it not not just he had bought it like I couldn't believe um, how good the things were so you've got all the all the um, bl um, propeller blades you've got a sun visor for the um, controller the controller has a um, an actual screen on the controller for flying so you don't have to use your um, mobile phone so here's the business end of the um, of the actual drone so it sits down in a beautiful um, foam container, you know, properly marked, um, made to suit the, the drone to fit into it. It comes with the um, handle for the for the um, camera to come off the drone. So the camera comes off the drone, the gimbal mounted camera, and that can go on to the handheld piece to then shoot footage like the um, Osmo. 
but much better um, so this is a very serious 4k camera this one here so the, the Osmo shoots brilliant footage but there are shortcomings in the Osmo and in that stuff that go along with that so it's a very decent um, drone it doesn't feel um, cheap and plasticky and rubbery so you've got a really good really good really easy gimbal mount protection to go onto the gimbal to support the camera when you're transporting it like the one for my um for my dji phantom i just i don't know where that's gone i've thrown that you know somewhere and it's you know it was too hard to understand how to put it back onto the onto it so it went by the wayside so you know and then you got another another two sets of propellers there um as well as the ones for the another um two sets of propellers up here so one thing we've got we've got truckloads of propellers um i don't plan to um crash the drone anything like that it'll be interesting to see i wouldn't mind betting you that the the batteries will fit in uh with the drone to be carried with the drone in the box um which will be a really handy thing for us to transport um, because we're going to do a big job up near Somerset Dam in uh, Lantana. So that's going to be a big deal for us. And it's very, very interesting to be going to go and do those things. But, you know, I, it's an amazing, um, and an amazing situation to see exactly how, how well put together all of this is and how it all fits snugly together to protect your... Um, protect your uh, asset and then folds up into the box and away you go so the remote controller fits in there but I've got it in the car because I was charging it so you know if you can buy a, a buy like this it's well and truly worth um, purchasing you know the price that this cost is a third of what the what a, uh, a Phantom 4 um, a Phantom 4 Pro would be you know, so you look at it from that, or Phantom 4 Pro Plus would be. But, you know, you're getting a screen with it. You're getting all those things with the remote controller. One of the things about these drones, and I think they've come down um, quite a lot in price, so they may be a place to look at for you, um, John. With these drones, um, they have on the side of them a speed up, so a, a hare and a tortoise on the side, and they respond respectively to that. When you fly the Phantom, you will find that the Phantom is very responsive, it's very agile, and you know, you may like that or you may not like it to that level, but there's no dialing it down. It performs at that level of performance, and that's that's what you um, deal with. So with this particular one here, being able to adjust it back to snail, uh, snail pace and have it respond very doughy and very easy to manage, yeah, it makes a big difference to you without then having to get rid of your drone and get a sportier model. Um, you can, you know, slide the slider back and uh, put some performance on there and still stay current to the machine that you then used to. And that's something that I would suggest is a major thing and a major reason why I would consider this to have been a good buy, not just because of the price that I purchased it for, but see, that's exactly what happened to that real estate guy, is that... Um, he was too frightened to ever put it in the air and that's exactly what happened it hasn't even had the um hasn't even been flown so you know when you look at that there's no value in it if it's just going to sit there and not be used you know there's there's people who have sold the inspire 2 which is about oh the, the price varies so much from australia and that but you know a lot of the inspires you're looking at about six thousand to ten thousand dollars in Australia with the camera on them. Um, I just got to close the windows on this car. Won't be a second. So anyway, so. Um, a lot more people than you think buy these drones and never ever actually fly them because they're too worried about them or they um, don't fly them and enjoy them because a lot of the videos are done from the point of view of 
of people that um, do these reviews and they really don't help people much to understand how simple the flying actually is but you know don't buy the drone if you're not prepared to fly it okay you can't you can't buy a drone and enjoy it um, it's a lot like a lot of other things if you're too afraid to take it out of the plastic and actually have a go and enjoy it then you are always going to be um, in a situation that you're just going to lose money on it what I was going to say to you is this guy you know that's a third of what he paid for the drone and when you look at it drones are like that if I, if I pay at the point that I join it six thousand dollars for an inspire right um, six to ten thousand dollars you can bet I'm gonna fly the wings off it um, by the time it's dead and gone it's gonna be a situation that it's gonna avert me that money that I sought from it okay because it's going to spend that much time in the air and flying it and doing real things. Not not doing reviews on YouTube, but actual flying for my businesses to get those um, things that I want to show people. The changes in land ecology and uh, in land tanner and different things. Aerial footage is something that um, is a very expansive and a very expensive um, situation. So, you know, it's no good um, being too afraid to put any miles on something. It's just, just not a good idea. Don't go there. Don't buy the thing in the first place. You know, I looked at another way of doing things with the business, and it's like $3,000 or $3,300 per year to be able to um, link into a mapping program similar to Google Earth, but a much more higher resolution situation where I might be able to look at properties that are already infested but you look at it from my point of view um, I'm better off buying the drone even at the six thousand dollar six to ten thousand dollar Inspire and own the drone and fly it anywhere I need to fly it and take my own footage specific to that timeline before during and after than what I am paying three and a half thousand dollars for a license for one year um, and with a lot of that stuff the actual footage isn't actually in the areas that you're working so you already start to see how the flaws in the system uh, <clears throat> spending the money on that drone would not be an outrageous thing to do having said that I have no intention of spending money on something like that in this timeline what I am saying is that I can see in the near future that the value to do that um, and operate those um, pieces of equipment are exactly the same as every other piece of equipment. Um, it does really, really matter to show people how um, how much the ecology has changed by all of these issues. And that can be just how beautiful the property is that you're flying over. Um, you know, there's a lot more to be done from that point of view. So that's that's basically what we're what we're about. You know. And I, um, I intend to go down that path because I enjoy the flying that much. So, but that gives you a bit of a rundown, John, between the two, um, the two uh, drones that we have at our disposal now. We'll be knocking the uh, cobwebs out of this one and getting her up in the air. She's all charged up. Everything's ready to rock and roll. But see, I was faced with the point of view that my drone, uh, the Phantom 3, is outdated and that's the other thing if you buy a drone you wait around for 12 months it's not worth anything like that okay those people that are asking 500 bucks for the drone paid 1200 1200 to 1300 bucks maybe more for that drone when they bought it out of the JB Hi-Fi or wherever they bought it okay so for them 500 bucks is um, is a really good price for somebody else wanting to buy the drone but for somebody like me there's no point another one of those ads was twelve hundred dollars for a phantom 3 pro with four batteries okay for twelve hundred dollars i didn't pay that for this one and this one far outweighs what the phantom 3 uh pro was okay it's that far outdated it's not worth that money not by a long shot but each battery you buy is 260 odd dollars so start to understand that person there themselves is trying to get some money back and it is a pro not a not a standard edition so it has other things going for it but it's still way too far outdated um, 
and you've got no idea of how hard its life's been in that time frame. So making your choices of purchasing the drone um, is one of those things. And that's one of the arguments some of the other people have brought up with having bought the Inspire 2 and then sold it because in the states there they had a you know eight thousand dollar drone in that their price in ours it was about a ten ten twelve thousand dollar drone um you know it the jobs that were coming in that they thought that, that they could fly for and they obviously flew a few fairly influential jobs but it wasn't worth their while those jobs weren't coming in all the time so having ten or twelve thousand dollars tied up in one one piece of gear and that gets inside your head you either fly the drone and fly the drone right if you start thinking this ten thousand dollars up in the air there and i best not crash this you're not going to get the footage that the people paying you are going to get okay so that's something that is very important in your choice factor don't put anything up there that you're not willing to lose or else you won't put it up there you'll always find an excuse not to fly it so that's my advice john for, for what it's worth um you know you can buy a lot of the small little drones but um they're harder to fly in that they move around a lot more um they don't take the crash landing very well at all so the argument as far as i'm concerned with the with the phantom the the strength of the chassis the strength of the um what's the name and with the fixed undercarriage you know and that's something that this drone has um i as far as i'm concerned is a major bonus the the inspires as expensive as they are the job that they do is makes them very very cheap okay that's that's uh, an odd thing to equate it like that but it makes them very cheap for what they do but you look at the actual um robustness of the landing gear and the uh, parts of it and you know it's a serious piece of kit you know but it is a serious ten thousand dollar bit of kit that's up there in the air and you have to decide that so practice on your on your cheaper smaller ones um like the phantom 3 which would be what i'd suggest i wouldn't go back any further than that um but yeah but then the four is a major investment but the same thing you can wait another 12 months and you'll probably find the fours will start to be thrown out the same way the three was and then you can buy it uh very reasonably priced and that's something to consider that's why we bought it at that time you know you want to buy the last of something because they've ironed all the bugs out of it you know especially if a lot of people have been flying it and that's what um what we decided to do anyway i hope that helps people um i'm really i've seen lots of flying of the unique um typhoon very happy with what i've seen um a lot of the stuff when you watch enough of it you can see that um a lot of this stuff is really really well done so i'm really um excited to um get at it when we get out to this job and and have some fun with it and show you guys some footage from it so thank you very much for popping in if you want to know anything please ask me any questions you want to know i'll do my best to answer it i'll do my best to answer it honestly in the way and experience i've had with my drones um but this isn't where we're starting. I'm enjoying the flying way too much. I'm going to uh, look at other things I can do with them as we go. Thank you very much for popping in. Remember, I'm Gary. I'm the Attitude Adjuster. My son Jolly is around a lot of the time. Uh, please share our videos. Please like our videos. And please say g'day. Catch us later.